How's everybody doing today? This is Antonio Moore coming to you from Tone Talks. I'm here with the wonderful Yvette Carnell. Um, we're going to have a great discussion, a short discussion about something that's in the news today. That's Trump's budget slashes as to Medicaid and food stamps that have just been reported. I want to let Yvette say hello and then just tell you the importance of this information. I just want to say hello, Breaking Brown family. And as usual, we're, we're trying to you know bring you black politics and show you why that's necessary. Please make sure to go to uh, DonateBrown.com and ToneTalks.org to donate. That's how we do this and bring you this this information that's necessary and pertinent. As I look across the web today, I, I find it very problematic that you go to the root.com and this is not covered on the cover of their site. Some of the biggest news for black America, arguably in the last five to ten years. Um, instead, we get Faith Evans on the cover of root.com. Um, you go to black, you go to... Uh, Black Voices, and instead of this being covered, we see Barack and Michelle Obama in Italy. Here we are with Trump proposing almost $800 billion in cuts to Medicaid and food stamps, and black media is dropping the ball. So I feel like it's my role, Yvette's role, Breaking Brown, Tone Talks, to bring to you the importance of why this is something that we need to be worried about and why we need to be vigilant in these moments. Everybody says, what's the solution? Well, the solution is you should know that this is happening today because if it isn't affecting you, the middle black fans were $1,700 without the family car. It's definitely probably affecting your family members. Anything you want to say before I read a small section of what just happened, what is happening with Trump? Go ahead. Go ahead. I know I think you're right. I think, I think, I think this, is, this is problematic in terms of black media, in terms of click-driven media, where we, we're more caught up in what can drive clicks. And that's, 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 that's a, I mean... Faith Evans was around in like the 90s, early 2000s, and she's taking precedence over cuts that could demolish your family in terms of cuts to the poor that allow you to eat. And that's the priority for a lot of these black media organizations. And, and, and with the root, it's not even black anymore. It's a, it's a black targeted, black targeted uh, a website. It's not black. It's owned by Univision now. So go ahead. So the heel.com reported, and I'm going to read a small section, and I'm going to throw it to you and give my opinion after you give yours. Um, Trump budget will slash Medicaid food stamp programs reports. President Trump's first major budget proposal will include sweeping cuts to Medicaid, federal pensions, and food stamps, according to the news report. The Washington Post reports that Trump's budget cuts will include $800 billion in Medicaid cuts over the next 10, year, 10 years, which would cause 10 million low-income people to lose health benefits. The White House will also give states more flexibility to impose work requirements for people taking taking part in various social welfare programs, according to the report. Trump's budget reportedly includes a massive $200 billion cut to the Supplemental Nutritional Assistance Program, referred to as food stamps, over the next 10 years, uh, slashing its budget by more than 25%. Anything you want to say? Well, you know... It's very interesting. When I said that somebody needed to get in the room with Trump, what I was saying is that somebody needs to get in the room with him to explain to him why these things that he's doing are going to gut the black community and, 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 and a much of the white working class poor. That's what I was talking about. I wasn't saying get in the room with Trump to try to, you know, to try to just, just be there to make him feel good to be the black person in the room. I was saying somebody needs to get in there to stop this. And to put this in context, Barack Obama, your former black president, cut food stamps as well by hundreds of millions of dollars, okay? He did that first, and now Trump is carrying it out, so it's, it, it makes it easier, because he can say, what, your first black president did it, what's the problem? And you don't understand, we don't understand, there, are, there aren't any more jobs. We have artificial intelligence taking over jobs. I mean, we have, we have all of that stuff taking over jobs. We don't have any jobs anymore. There are no more jobs. There are more people in America than jobs. There are more people who need jobs than there are jobs available. And at that time when he should be putting more money into the system in terms of some type of some type of guaranteed income, he's taking money out of the system. And there's no and he has a Republican Congress, so there's no check, there's no balance, and we're caught in the middle of it because that's us. So what I want to think about is when you tell me that black politics isn't necessary, what are you saying? This is politics, and this will affect your life, your life, or your mama's life, or your sister's life, or your cousin's life, or somebody in your community, because we all live around other black people. And, and what I would add to it is, you know, I interviewed Thomas Shapiro of Black Wealth, White Wealth, and what he said is that black people are only represented in 13 professions 
to the actual percentage of their population. Mm. Our number one employer is the USPS, the Postal Service. I don't think that black people understand that we are now a working poor group with no work to do. Mm. And I, I, I look at this, you know, and I love talking to you, but I like to interject data to what you're saying so everybody gets context that this is not a woe is me situation. This is the truth of blackness in America. According to the Center on Budget and Policy Priorities, a research institute, they talked about something called food insecurity. And what they said is more than one in five African American households, 23%, and more than one in four African American families with children, 28%, have difficulty affording adequate food. So this is almost three times the share for white households. Understand what it means to say that you're going to cut that amount from food stamps. What it means for black families, what it means for black America, what it means for you, whether you're secure or not, because your family web relies on these things. I want to give a couple more data points just so we're clear on the importance of food stamps for African Americans, whether you want to take a conservative uh, position that, you know, people need to get off food stamps, people got to eat today. That doesn't work. One in three food stamp households is headed by an African American. Again, this is according to the Center on Budget and Policy Priorities, a research institute. One in three food stamp households is headed by an African American. More than a third of food stamp benefits, over $10 billion per year, are issued to African Americans. Nearly 9 million African Americans receive food stamps each month. This represents a quarter of the African American population. A typical African American family on food stamp program income has an income at 50% of the poverty line. Food stamps constitute 26% of total monthly income for a typical African-American family that participates in the program. I'll let you chime in with your opinion on that data and how it actually twines with your earlier statement. Well, one of the interesting things, if you recall, there was a Breaking Brown Live episode where we put up the states that use the most Medicaid. And those states had overwhelmingly large percentages of black people in them. We're talking about Georgia. We're talking about Maryland. We're talking about places with a lot of black people. And one of the things to keep in mind, too, because we have this conservative strain of the black community. It's just like, well, what the problem is is that people should just get off food stamps. These people don't want to work. A lot of these people who are on food stamps are working. Like, if you work at Walmart, you qualify for food stamps because the company that you work for isn't paying you enough to get by. So instead of putting pressure on these companies to pay more so that people don't necessarily need food stamps, you're telling, you're telling people who need this money that you just can't have this money because we don't want you to have it. Nobody's putting pressure on the companies. But that takes black politics that so we're going to go put pressure on the government to put pressure on these companies to provide a, a, a living wage, to provide health care. None of that is happening. And so what I want to caution people against is this move that we have towards blaming other black people. I call it blame black people first. Blame black first. No, the problem is society. The problem is we're not getting the wages. Wage and production used to be, if, we, if you went hand in hand in terms of the line, it's not that way anymore. Production has gone up over the last 30 years, and wages have stagnated. That's why you see more people on food stamps. It's not because black people are lazy or black people don't want to take care of themselves or black people don't want to work. They're not making enough money if they are working, and then they can't find a job most of the time if they're not. Yeah, and I have to agree, and I think so many people don't really grasp what roots this country in terms of, like, predatory loans, in terms of mass incarceration, and what, in terms of blackness and what that means and how whiteness relies on blackness to take those positions. I did an article for with the, where I got interviewed by the Huffington Post, and they talked about how in Mississippi the jails were closing, and essentially the, the people who were running the jails were mad that they weren't being sent more prisoners. You, like the white people that the communities that relied on those jails for jobs were not worried about crime they were worried about the fuel of having prisoners like product in their jails and I say this as I go back to the article that black America needs to come upon a, a great awakening of what blackness means not because Mia Yvette says it but because it, it is what it is yeah. when, when, when you look at this reality of 
of, of why whites are worth so much more than blacks and how government created this. It takes government to fix that. Redlining was real. It yep. was real, and it still lasts into today. And and so I want to come back to this article from The Hill. I'm pulling it up again. Pull it up for yourself. Read it. It's not very long. Trump budget will slash Medicaid food stamp programs. And so many people misunderstand and don't understand like how important Medicaid is. I'm going to read a section of this, then I'm going to read a, a, a little section about the importance of Medicaid to African Americans, particularly poor African Americans, but really all African Americans. Then I'm going to let you speak, and then I'm going to speak, and we'll close it out. Um, Trump promised repeatedly on the campaign trail to avoid cuts to Medicaid, Medicare, and Social Security. The budget plan, which is set to be publicly unveiled Tuesday, does not contain cuts to Medicare and Social Security, but its large cut to Medicaid falls in line with House Republicans' desire to curtail the expansion of the program. So understand that Medicaid is basically medical services to the poor. And like when you when I tell you that we're a working poor people, you might come back to me, well, not me. When I tell you that the middle black family is worth seventeen hundred dollars, you might come back to me and say, not me. When I tell you that the middle that the typical black woman with a college degree is worth negative eleven thousand dollars, you might come back to me and say, not me. Well, you can't always be not me. Especially when the data says otherwise. We got to start getting honest. Everybody wants a solution. The first solution is look in the mirror and get honest about your economic situation. Not your income, but your wealth. Not just your wealth, but your grandmama's wealth. And your mama's wealth. And your cousin's wealth. And your sister's wealth. And how all that leads to a sense of either stability or instability in your life. And I think for us, we're all living so individually on income and credit that we're not doing that work. Let me read this section about Medicaid. Medicaid is a major, this is from the, again, I like to give you sources. I don't just talk to be rambling. Kaiser Family Foundation, the Kaiser Commission. They did this report. It's a little, it's a little older from 2009, 2010, but it's still pretty much like relevant data for today. It says 27% of black Americans 10 million people, including 6 million children, were covered by Medicaid, compared to 39% covered by employer-based coverage and 9% covered by Medicare. In contrast, 11% of non-Hispanic white Americans were covered by, by Medicaid. Black Americans account for one in five Medicaid enrollees. Another small section I want to share with you is Medicaid covered nearly half 50% of poor black Americans or those living below the poverty line and a quarter of near poor or those with incomes above the poverty but, but below twice the poverty line. Medicaid is an important source of coverage for many black Americans with substantial health services needs. Medicaid covered over a third of blacks in, in regardless, of, regardless of income in fair or poor health and 59% of blacks with HIV or AIDS. It's like, at the end of it, it seems like Medicaid is the, is the critical, like safe way to keep us in any kind of stability when medic medical issues come about. Would you agree? I agree, and I, and I wanna I want to just address one thing really quickly. I hear a lot of black people who kind of get ashamed at the fact that they're on Medicaid. Well, we should get off the government anyway. I don't wanna be on Medicaid. I don't wanna be associated with government programs, it makes us look bad and we get embarrassed. What we don't understand is that white people are also getting getting government health care, even if they work for a company, even if they have private insurance, because that employer can deduct that on their tax returns. So what you're really doing is hiding. What you're really doing is hiding how white people get government access and get government handouts or get government subsidies. But you're putting it out there to look at these black people and all this stuff. No, that's for a reason. We're all getting it just a different way. We're all getting subsidized by the government just in a different way. And what they're doing is just targeting black people, right? They're just targeting black people in terms of, okay, most black people, nobody will care. That's what they're doing. But you have to stand up for this. And another thing I say I want to bring attention to is the whole reason for when you, when you talk about Medicaid and even when you talk about a lot of government programs in terms of health care, what they did that for because they knew that there were going to be people in the system who they were going to be so poor because of just because of how capital works. So essentially, 
you know what what I what I what I believe is that we need to be vigilant. We need to be aware. Everybody says, "What's the solution?" We need to challenge black media. And ask the question today: Why wasn't that a cover story? We need to ask ourselves whether we knew this information, and, and if we didn't, share it with other people. Everybody needs to look in the mirror and ask themselves: If your sister, who's on Medicaid, had to come to you for the twenty-five thousand dollars service that she might need, could you pay it? I know I couldn't. I know I couldn't. And I think that you then have to start positioning yourself to understand what these cuts mean in terms of your actual life if you don't stay aware. And that's my, my, my thing today. I didn't want to go too long, but let's let, let's share this information. Anything you want to say as we leave out? I think we have to get honest. When you say get honest, get honest means we got to start fighting for government. Stop acting like you don't need it. Everybody else gets it. Stop fighting. We're going to fight for government, period. We're not gonna we're not gonna pay attention to to media that says we shouldn't fight for government. That's what we gotta do. We gotta get in here right now. I can't talk to you about something's gonna happen. There's something that might happen five five hundred years from now. Some some progress we might make five hundred years from now. I gotta talk to you about right now about your family members right now who aren't gonna have food stamps and no way to eat because of that. Let's get, we only we only got a little bit of time to get honest, okay? And we need to do it right now. I agree. Um, thank you again for coming on. Go to uh, donatebrown.com to donate to Yvette Carnell. Do donate from, with me at tonetalks.org. Let's keep this information going. Um, thank you again. Thank you.